please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. With our top focus at this hour, a thousand point drop for the Dow overnight led to a weak day of trade for the Lal Street and marks an end to the worst week since August last year. The Nifty respected its earlier support of 10,400 and managed to end above that level. The Sensex closed just above the 35,000 mark. Bank Nifty, though, saw deep cuts of over 550 points. The mid caps were the clear star of today's session as that index recovered more than 450 points. To end in the green. Let's bring in Anuj Singhal who joins in now with a wrap of today's trading action. Anuj, uh, a choppy session, needless to say. Well, big volatility for the market once again, but again, the, the key point was that mid caps were resilient. There is some selling pressure on the large caps and large cap financials in particular. But if you see the week to date chart, this week the Nifty is down 2.8%. But the mid-cap index is up 0.6% in a global volatility phase. That's that's a big confidence booster for the bulls. Uh, that you know maybe there's some incremental selling which is left in the large caps. Uh, HDFC, HDFC Bank, ICICI, Yes, Axis, SBI, all of them dragged the markets today. And uh, Infosys and Larsen and Tubro were also down. On the gaining side, you had some stocks like HCL Tech, Tata Steel ahead of its numbers, Cipla, which continues to gain ground. In the FNO space, some big movers today. Fortis was up 20% as that deal is now, you know, it looks like the deal is happening with uh, Mal Malvinder Singh and Shiminder Singh now out of the company. Sale was higher, Reliance Power and Hindustan Zinc did well. Glenmark, on the other hand, was the big loser down about 7%. All in all, the, the bulls should not be too unhappy because the market did not break Tuesday, last Tuesday's low like the US market did and the mid caps did well. Next week is going to be crucial. It's a truncated week as well, so let's see how the markets react. Okay, fair enough. We'll have to wait and watch out for next week then. But let's talk about Asian markets. Asian markets uh, also got pummeled across the board in trade today. So uh, let's pull those up for you. In Japan, the Nikkei ended about 2.5% lower. The losses were greater though in China, with the Shanghai Composite tumbling over 4%. Uh, and you can see the South Korean Kospi also following suit, down by about one8 8%. Let's pull up European markets while we are at it. European markets have commenced trade on a weak note as well. But the losses are not as steep as we saw on Wall Street yesterday in Asia today. So FTSE fairly flattish. Uh, DAC and FTSE actually both flattish with the negative bias and the French CAC down by about one-tenth of a percent. Uh, the, but let's of course talk about the big story back home. Uh, and this is something that has kept the markets on tender hook. Last night, Malvinder and Shivendra Singh informed the exchanges that they have resigned from the board of Fortis Healthcare. But the story doesn't really end here. Now, there are reports emerging that allege that the Singh brothers have taken at least $78 million from the company without the approval of the board. Very, very serious allegations there. Ikta Batra, who has been tracking the sector very closely, is here with the details. Uh, Ikta, what are you picking up? And, uh, you know, is this uh, perhaps the beginning of what could be a large saga? Is this a Satyam-like condition? Well, uh, I wouldn't actually go as far as uh, putting, you know, uh, all of uh, any sort of allegations with regards to Fortis. Let's just put the news on the table at this point in time and the facts that we're working with. So, for example, we have agency reports which came out today which indicated that Singh Brothers have taken at least $78 million out of Fortis about a year ago without board approval. Uh, the funds reported on the balance sheet of Fortis were as cash and cash equivalents, but the money was routed and then placed under control of the Sings. Now, the other piece of news related to this is that Deloitte has refused to sign off on the Q2 numbers until the fun funds were accounted for or returned, not clear what the funds were used for in any case. Uh, Singh Brothers are working to pay back the money as per the agency report so that the company can release its results. And as per Fortis, the company is loaned around 473 crores to certain corporate bodies in its normal course of treasury operations. Subsequently, these companies uh, then became a part of the Singh corporate group and the loans since then have been recognized as related party transactions and the repayment has commenced. Now uh, this is basically what the agency report had indicated which really rattled uh, the stock on an intraday basis but it still held up with gains uh, reacting to the resignation which had uh, been announced last evening. Now uh, however it is important to note that Fortis did come out with a statement uh, you know clarifying, th uh, clarifying these reports saying that yes those funds were deployed in secured short-term investments 
with co which companies normally do in terms of normal treasury operations. The entities as of end of Q3 FI18 became a part of the promoter group due to the shareholding change and uh, the entire amount is expected to be repaid by the end of Q1 FI19. They deny allegations of auditors having refused to sign accounts for Q2. The results could not be tabled before the board for approval which had taken place on the 14th of November. In fact, 13th of Feb is when they will meet uh, in order to approve the Q2 and the Q3 numbers. So we will get clarity in terms of what the auditors are thinking. If there is any sort of discrepancy um, as per these reports, that will probably come out on the 13th of Feb. Separately, there is a trend which is going on here, which probably has disconcerted more. So for example, the Singh brothers are also facing a lawsuit by a New York-based private equity firm, uh, where there is an accusation of siphoning money to help manage their personal debts. And this is re related to Relegay. So it just puts it into context as a larger trend at hand, as opposed to just one issue that we're dealing with. Okay, uh, we will of course have to watch that very closely. Feb 13th is the meeting where we should have some answers. Of course, serious allegations coming in there, but the fact that the Singh brothers have resigned just last night could be a factor that we need to keep a watch for. But uh, time now for an exclusive with the resignation of promoters uh, Malvinder and Shivinder Singh from Fortis Healthcare Board. A deal to sell Fortis looks imminent. In fact, the Fortis Healthcare stock spiked in today's trade. This after we broke the news that Manipal Hospitals, backed by the TPG Group, is an advanced merger talks with Fortis Healthcare. Nisha Poddar is here with exclusive uh, details. Uh, Nisha, the resignation of the Singh brothers from Fortis board clears a major hurdle as far as the deal is concerned, isn't it? Sources with direct knowledge shared that the resignations coming in from the promoters of Fortis Healthcare was to uh, really clear the roadmap for a large transaction that is brewing at Fortis Health. So Manipal Hospitals, uh, which is backed by TPG, is the front runner and is in advanced talks uh, to really buy out Fortis Healthcare. Sources with direct knowledge share that remember here there was a big hurdle because the Supreme Court really were ruled that the inherent value of shares held by the promoter in Fortis Healthcare really cannot change. So that was putting a roadblock to the overall deal. So what legal eagles have really advised and what could be the real contour of uh, this large transaction is that Manipal uh, Hospital's led consortium could merge Fortis Healthcare in itself and remember here that a primary infusion of funds could also be a component of this large transaction. Sources suggest that as per uh, legal advice given to Fortis Healthcare, a primary infusion of funds as well as a merger does not violate the Supreme Court's order which bars uh, the promoters from selling or changing the value of the shares held in Fortis Healthcare. So that's what I'm gathering from sources with direct knowledge that this particular transaction could be in the final stages and all the developments that have really happened are to really smoothen the process for the transaction to go through but we'll have to really one caveat see that no more legal hurdles really appear on the path of this transaction uh, in this particular format well there are several legal hurdles at this point so we will have to watch uh, if at all this merger does actually stay on now uh, thanks nisha for taking us through those details uh, cnbc tv 18 exclusive the world bank has for the first time strongly defended its ranking for the india ease of doing business index. Remember, World Bank Chief Economist Paul Romer reportedly resigned from his post over a ranking controversy involving Chile. Chilean officers have been criticized in the World Bank for ranking the country poorly on the ease of doing business index, raising questions over the credibility of these rankings. Now, speaking exclusively to Rituparna Bhuyan, World Bank India Director Junaid Ahmed said that India's improvement in ranking is purely based on ground realities. Uh, methodologies and data have to constantly improve. Mm -hmm. uh, as you'll see in this health index itself, government is saying we were able to only do certain measurements because we have so much data. And as we learn, we'll improve the methodology. Criticism has then come in saying that if the methodology is changed, why not correct the previous rankings? And the World Bank has said that let's not compare you know, two rankings of two years because the methodology is different. So, so uh, uh, how would you look at that criticism in terms of the ranking is actually a statistical phenomenon, uh, and and if you if you if you you know flatten out the statistical factors, then the ranking is not that good. Well, two 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 responses to what you have said. First, as I said before, 
all the shifts that you're seeing is based on ground realities of policy making an impact on the ground. Mm -hmm. And these are feedback directly from uh, the companies themselves, from the small and medium enterprises. Mm -hmm. They're not an artifact of methodology or an artifact of, of data. Mm -hmm. uh, second point that I want to make is everyone is worried about the ranking, but everyone has forgotten that ultimately what we look at is something we call distance to the frontier. Mm -hmm. This is a separate measurement in the ease of doing business, which looks at the absolute shifts a country is doing towards what we think is the ideal situation or the best uh, story. India has consistently, year after year, improved in its, e in its distance to the frontier. And that will prove that, in fact, what we're doing is data directly from the ground. So I'm not too worried about uh, debates that academics have about methodologies on data. We welcome it because the only way one improves it. Right. But I am absolutely convinced and I'm categorical about the shifts that India has taken. Now, government think tank Niti Aayog today released state rankings on health performance index. The index aims to capture incremental changes in the health outcomes across all states. So, how exactly have different states performed and what are the parameters to judge this? Uh, Ritu Panabhuyan joins in now with more details. Uh, Ritu, uh, take away the most important takeaways from this interview. In the health index uh, that was released by Niti Aayog today amongst large states, uh, Kerala, Punjab and Tamil Nadu tops the list in that order, while uh, Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan and Bihar are the worst performers. Uh, as far as small states are concerned, uh, Mizoram tops the list uh, with, a, the, with the Union Territory list being topped by Lakshwadeep. Uh, several interesting uh, snippets coming out from this uh, report. For example, the Health Ministry now says that uh, it is based on the performance of this index that states will be incentivized uh, through the National Health Scheme. Moreover, some very, very interesting and troubling, uh, you know, uh, statistics coming out. For example, sex ratio in Haryana continues to be really bad uh, at, at, at about uh, 831 girl childbirths per uh, 1,000 uh, boys that are born. And hence, this report says that there is a need to implement the preconception prenatal diagnostic techniques act very strictly. Moreover, as far as uh, availability of health staff is concerned, this report finds that uh, in one third of the states and union territories, uh, uh, the, the, the post of CMO uh, is, is occupied for less than 12 months. Uh, also, 25% of, uh, of the midwifery you know, our midwife uh, uh, vacancies uh, exist in, 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 in most of the states. Uh, however, there are some good snippets as well. For example, in states like Jammu and Kashmir, there is 100% uh, uh, you know, uh, Im Im immunization coverage. Uh, so net-net, uh, this will be, report will be now used to assess uh, the service delivery as far as uh, health, uh, health uh, related, related services are concerned in states and uh, support will be given accordingly as per the performance of the states uh, in this uh, Niti Aayog index. With that, it's back to you. Okay, Ritu, thanks for taking us through that. But let's now get to our big exclusive from the telecom space. Vodafone expects to complete its merger with IDEA in the first half of 2018. That's the word from the MD and CEO of Vodafone India, Sunil Sood. In a rare interview, he speaks to Yash Jain. Here's the exclusive details. If you look at the steps of a merger, we had to first get the CCI approval, which we've got, after which we had to get the stock exchange approvals and the SEBI approvals, which we have got. The next step is for individually both the companies to get the NCLT approvals, which we have now got. So the last step is actually to get the DOT uh, approvals in terms of merging the licenses, etc., and then going back and uploading it into your into the website, into your sites, right, where the registrar of companies is concerned. So we are on the last step right now. And as we have announced publicly in the, with the last uh, results uh, meeting, that we expect the merger to be completed in the first half of this calendar year. Lovely, sir. So very soon, according to you, we can see this merger concluding. Uh, a question on uh, the IUC cut. What is the kind of impact which that has had on the balance sheet of Vodafone? If you can quantify that in terms of uh, helping me understand, what is the overall impact which has come from the IUC cut? Well, the IUC cut uh, will impact any of the existing companies uh, and only favors uh, one uh, company. And uh, the uh, impact overall for our industry would be in multiple thousand crores. Okay, so that's the impact. And each one of us will be losing about a thousand crores plus. Okay, so that's the kind of impact uh, uh, we are having. 
Okay, that was a very rare interview with Sunil Sood and that's actually his first after the idea and Vodafone deal was announced. But with that, we're completely out of time on this edition of After the Bell. Many thanks for staying with the show, but stay tuned to CNBC TV 18. Our next is our special show from Edelweiss India Conference where market experts give their take on market volatility and what lies ahead. Stay tuned.